As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, these are Jesus' own words. And I am made terribly aware that among us there are our brothers and sisters who are preparing themselves to be baptized in three weeks' time. They are now catechumens and they will uh, receive the second scrutiny today. So from the second reading, I would read again. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light. Now when you are baptized, the day you're baptized at Easter, you will receive a candle. It symbolizes something. Let us now take a look at this. It is about the light that comes into the world, the light that you have to bear until the day you die. I think most people like the light. Am I correct? Sunlight, the people like the sunlight so much, they sunbathe. Eh? Torchlight, I'm sure many people like candlelights. See, there's so many candles here. Light candles and fireworks is a form of light too. There is something magical about light. And different people express this differently. Sometimes we don't think about it, we don't know why we like it. it just, I just like it. But some, a person recently beautifully described it this way. Light gives me a warm feeling and gives me a sense of hope. Perhaps you have the same opinion or feelings about light. No wonder that there are different festivals of lights all over the world. I will mention a few and I think you would recognize some of them. Deepavali for the Indians. Loi Kratong in Thailand. Those of you who have been in Thailand perhaps know. Toro Nagashi in Japan. And for the Jews, the Hanukkah. But this festival of lights carries different meanings. The light has carries different significance. I will explain to you a little bit here. Deepavali, or known as Diwali, is symbolizing the triumph of light over darkness. And in Thailand, the Loi Kratong. Loi means the float, and Kratong is the lotus-shaped vessel made of banana leaves. And they would put the light inside this banana leaves uh, float, and they would let it float along the river. What does it mean? People there are offering thanks to the goddess of water. It is believed that the Kratongs carry away bad luck. So as the kratong goes away, your bad luck also goes away. That's the way they believe. Toronagashi in Japan is also floating candles or kind of lights on the water, but it has a different meaning. It is believed that it believed that this guides the spirits of the departed back to the other world. So it's about the spirit going to the other world. And for the Jews, the Hanukkah, it also means something else. It is a commemoration of the great battle between the Maccabees and the Syrians in the year 165 BC. Guess who won? The Jews won the battle. And when they went to their temple, they found that the Syrians had allowed their sacred light to go out. So it is a commemoration of their winning the battle. What about us? For Christians, light has a special meaning. I personally always like lights, especially Christmas lights. Last Christmas, I really enjoyed the blue lights, Christmas lights decorations along Orchard Road. You know, I, I know that I will be sent away sometime this year, mid of this year, and I don't know when I can 
see the Christmas lights in Singapore again, so I just enjoyed myself with the blue lights. For Christians, these lights are symbols for Jesus, the Son of God who came as light to enlighten the world with the truth about God. Jesus affirmed that he did not come to condemn the world, but to offer us clearer view so that we can choose between life and death. Now, if we are offered the choice, life and death, which one would you choose? It may sound straightforward, right? Who would choose death? But in practice, it may not be so easy to make this choice. Why? Because the death that is chosen is not right away, not immediate, you know? And when you choose life, it may entail some sacrifice, some sufferings even, you know? So, when you choose death, it may give you something more pleasurable, less pain, more profitable perhaps, more lucrative. But without knowing, you have taken the death sentence, just like Eve, when she chose to eat, to, to go against God, she didn't die right away. She said, oh, no, it's true, I didn't die. But she didn't know that she has chosen a death sentence. Jesus, though, brought something new to understand, a new understanding about God. That's why he is the light. At the time when people were frightened of destructive forces of nature, like hurricane, storm, you know, maybe tsunami, and they thought that God was punishing and condemning them, Jesus came to tell that our God is a loving God. A God who loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. Did people believe him? Some people would not be convinced and jeering him they asked, how much love does this God have for us? Jesus would stretch out his arms and be lifted upon the cross for many people to see. This much love he would demonstrate to all. This much love God has for you. Take a look. This much love. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. The crucifix is the sign for us. Now we do not have to wonder and guess anymore about the nature of God. We only need to make a choice to believe or not to believe. And in so doing, we choose between life and death, or death sentence, if you like better. For everyone who believes in him will not be lost, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already. Let us be aware of certain happenings in the world regarding this. Are there people believing or are people not believing anymore? In November 2009, the European Court of Human Rights has said that the display of crucifixes in Italian public schools violates religious and education freedoms. The crucifix could be disturbing to non-Christian or atheist pupils. Now, this European Court of Human Rights, they are powerful. 
whatever they said is applicable to all Europe. Naturally, there would be reactions. A Vatican spokesman, Federico Lombardi, said, the crucifix was a fundamental sign of the importance of religious values in Italian history and culture and was a symbol of unity and welcoming for all humanity. Did the court listen? Yes, they did, but they disagree at that time and said, the presence of the crucifix could easily be interpreted by pupils of all ages as a religious sign. And they would feel that they were being educated in a school environment bearing the stamp of a given religion. In this case, Catholicism. In other words, they said, take down all the crosses in a school. What happened after that? 14 months later, the court changed their mind. In March 2011, they gave schools in Italy the go-ahead to keep their Roman Catholic symbols on display and declared that Christian imagery in class does not harm non-Christian pupils. Change. Huh? In politics, things change. Let us now turn our eyes to the East, to China in particular. What is the population of China, do you know? One source says it is 1.3 billion people in China. How many Christians are there now? The Chinese government says there are 25 million Christians divided into Protestants, 18 million, and about 6 million Catholics. But independent estimates all agree that this is a vast underestimate. A conservative figure is that there are 60 million Christians in China now. Now with this number, 60 million, there are already more Chinese at church on a Sunday like today, than in the whole of Europe. More Chinese in church. So while the light seems to be dimming in the West, it seems to be getting brighter in the Far East. Jesus is truly the light. For me, I believe so. I will share with you a recent experience of mine that may illustrate what I mean. Why is Jesus the light? Last Ash Wednesday, some of you came here, get your ash on the forehead. That day I was invited to visit a Buddhist temple. I know that Buddhism is a peaceful religion. And a friend of mine, a nun, once told me that there are many similar teachings in Buddhism as in Christianity. And I, it stuck with, in my mind that we are very much similar in a teaching of peace you know, and non-violence. The temple was newly renovated, equipped with solar panels. You know the pagoda light? There are solar panels actually. And equipped with regulated water watering system of plants using rainwater collected from the roof, not wasting any water. So it was quite an impressive establishment. I thank the person who invited me. I found something else there. At the reception desk, there were some information leaflets, and I took them. In one of these leaflets, I found Buddha's law on filial love, love between parents and children. It is as follows. In the Sutra of 42 sections, it said, the people make offerings to heaven and earth and to the demons and deities. 
It is better that they respect and entertain filial love towards their parents. Their parents are the very gods and deities. Now these teachings actually help me to understand the feelings of or the practice of filial love in the Chinese family. Although they become Christians, it has been ingrained in the culture. And I know, I can see now, one source is, must have been the teaching of Buddha, this one. This last sentence, their parents are the very gods and deities, caused something inside me when I read it. I found that this teaching is an ideal to achieve, yes. And this teaching is somewhat similar to the fourth commandments of Christianity. Honor your father and your mother. But somehow that sentence unsettled me. Let us take a look at the Bible. What, what does the Bible say about filial love? The Bible says this, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? and have no compassion on the child she has born. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. It is from Isaiah. God was speaking through Isaiah, and he said, Though she may forget, I will not forget you. The reality nowadays, brothers and sisters, is that many parents can forget their children. How do I know? The babies aborted every day in the world are testimonies to this. How many? In the United States alone, there are 4,000 babies being aborted every day. And this information is from a few years back. Now maybe more? and that's only in the United States alone. This is testimony that parents can forget their children nowadays. But Jesus tells us the truth that God is our true parent who will never disappoint us, a parent whom we can really rely on. And that is why we can call him Abba, Father. This is an amazing revelation to us because on Ash Wednesdays, as we are being reminded, we are dust who are here today and gone tomorrow. But these dusts are important to God. These dusts are someone to God. And this truth has come from Jesus. And that is why he is the light of the world, because this truth that God is our loving Father gives meaning to our life, and it becomes a foundation to build our hope on. Without the confirmation that God is truly loving, we can never build any hope on our future. So, brothers and sisters, let us remember that the crucifix is not a mere decoration. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be just an identity of a person or even an identity of a nation. It is more than that. It is a reminder of Jesus' sacrifice, a signature of God's true love for us, sealed with blood and water. And it is an assurance that our trust in Him will not go in vain. Amen.